The following episode of Seriously Wrong is horrifying, spooky, frightening, and edge of your seat, spooktacular. We just want to give everyone fair warning, this is a fear-topia. It's a scarepocalypse, it's a bona fide auditory nightmare. You'll be kept up at night for weeks. We have to be honest and we have to be responsible in our warnings. We have to be responsible in our warnings! This is actually so scary that it may cause any living person to die when they hear it. It is not suitable for people who are under the age of still alive. Yeah, like you know in The Ring, you die in seven days if you watch the tape. Or there's like chants when you're a kid, you chant certain things in the mirror at night and then something, you'll die or whatever. Yeah. This is like that. It's like you listen to this tape and you sign a covenant with the dark forces of the world that eventually your life will be taken as a result. And all who listen will fall to that curse unless you do one simple easy thing that can reverse it all, reverse the curse, to totally lift it off you, and you can listen to the tape, and we will tell you what that thing is. All you have to do is listen all the way through the whole episode. Don't skip to the end. Listen all the way through the whole episode. Do not skip to the end. Like, seriously, do not. The cursed tape vibes on that are, like, like, totally fucked up. Yeah, just avoid it. So you get to the end of the episode, and then you do this one simple thing. And then you're 100% protected from the curse of the tape. And it's not Patreon. It's not. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Oh, they're going to ask us to donate to their Patreon is the one simple thing. No, we you have to put a that. Patreon ask near the beginning as well. Like, will you please give to the Patreon? $6 yeah. a month helps support the show. We I'm do that now. that all the way to the end. No, I mean, we don't have that luxury. And yeah, with that out of the way, we'll just pop in this tape and uh, press play. Sweet kind Where am I? Why are these creepy little girls chanting this song? I am the Nightmare King. (laughs) (laughs) Thank goodness it was just a dream. I'll never be able to get back to sleep now. Unless I listen to my favorite calming tape. The Seriously Wrong Halloween special. It's a scary tape too, but... I've heard it so many times now, it's just soothing to me. Pop it in and press play. Just keep digging, we're almost there, we're almost there. This mud's so wet. Can't we dig up this grave another night, boss? It has to be tonight, you know it has to be tonight. This tape is too important to let slip through our fingers again. Oh, you're talking about the uh, seriously wrong Halloween special? The one that they lost in an intellectual property dispute with Xenon Podcasting Corporation, and which the CEO had himself buried with? Nobody in the world has ever listened to this tape before. We're going to be the first. There it is. Hey, quick, brush it off. Wow, fancy corpse box. Wouldn't mind having one like this myself someday. Who cares about any of that? We got the seriously wrong Halloween special tape. Did you bring the tape player like I asked? You bet, boss. Here it is. And we're going to listen to it right here in this grave. Hit play. On it, boss. I'll just press play. Uh, That's between the uh, pods and the uh, stop eject. So I have to count from the edge. Play. We now go to a dark, winding road at night. As a family drives through the countryside, pitch black outside of their headlights, winding through unfamiliar territory. You were really distracted tonight. You were just kind of kept peering off into the corners, shiftily gazing. What was up with you? It's gremlins. It's 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 it's, not this again. No. Look, I. There's no gremlins at my company dinner party. There's gremlins everywhere. Look, okay. I know it sounds crazy, but across the world, cultures all over the world, Africa. China, indigenous cultures, European cultures, there are folk stories of little mischievous creatures. They call them different things, but they are reported from all corners of the planet. And then we just think that because they don't show up on video, that they don't exist. People have mischievous and mysterious things happen to them all the time. It's like a cliche, oh, my underwear is missing from my dryer and stuff like that. Fairies. And then people and open myst- their dryers and there's like socks inside, like place where they slip in between the door or whatever. Great, no, everything can be explained. Oh, Bill Nye the science guy's back. Look, Very I'm just saying, of you. gremlins haven't 
jumped out at you and done anything, even if they're doing these little mischievous things, I don't understand why that has to I really ruin wish our you night take out. this stuff more seriously. This is my life's work. This is not little. your life's work. You're an award winning architect. That's your well, life's work. I appreciated work. when you supported me getting into architecture, and I would like your support in pivoting to this. It's going to make our family a lot of money. I just don't know if it's the right time for this kind of risky career shift. I'm just saying that maybe the time for you to do this thing has passed. This is your phobia. This is your fear. I'm afraid of little mischievous creatures that no one believes exist who are pulling pranks on us all day. But you are afraid that you can't change, that you can't do whatever you want anymore, that having a kid just means that you have to be who you are forever. That's not the case. You, you know, you can, ch you can always change. There are real little mischievous gnomes everywhere. Anywhere humans are but are not looking. Would you That's stop yelling now? You've got the baby upset. We're on this dark and winding road. Oh. It's night. It's pitch black. And the Percival. Baby. Shh, shh. Percival. Shh, 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 shh. Please just keep your eyes on the winding road. I'll take care of the baby. We'll get him something. I'm trying to help him, but I, I'm having to take care of you Percival. and tell you how to drive second. at the same time. Shh, 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 baby. Oh, look out. Look out. Something wrong with the brake, I don't know. Did we hit it a deer or something? Or, or a, a bear? What what? Oh god. What is that? I've never seen anything like that. It's like Is it like spines going down its back and patches of rough hair? And goat hooves and two tails. Those, are those boils? Is it rotting? Razor sharp talons. Bat like wings? Still breathing. It, oh my god, dude. Uh, let's just, uh, uh, stay back. The Seriously Wrong Halloween Special! Prepare to piss yourself so much that every fiber in your pants is covered in piss, and then the piss starts going on the floor. I listened to this tape last night and I pissed. That's how I know. Like, you know when you get so scared you piss your fucking pants? That's what this special does, and I know because it happened to me. After his parents were devoured by a mysterious nighttime beast, baby Percival was placed in an orphanage under the oppressive leadership of headmistress child murderer, a sharply cruel woman who hated all children, but who was also a beloved and well-connected member of the wrong town elite. To headmistress child murderer, I present to you the key to the city. Oh, thank you, it's such an honor. The orphans were forced into harsh labor. Percival, from a young age, scrubbed toilets and peeled potatoes to earn his daily gruel. Headmistress Child Murderer took special care to tell the children every day that there was no one who loved them. Kids, gather round. I just wanted to tell you that nobody loves you and nobody ever will love you. That's all, back to work. The headmistress didn't believe in holidays, especially for children. Because of this, all the orphans were forced to work double shifts and never got any Halloween treats. Percival always loved Halloween. He wished so much that he could one day just experience Halloween for himself, just for one night. But the headmistress always made him peel potatoes. Oh, I hate peeling potatoes. It's my greatest dream to have Halloween for just one night. The headmistress also ran a charity haunted house for Halloween, which the orphans were forced to work in. It was the glitziest, most high-scale haunted house in all of Wrongtown. Pictures of the headmistress with visiting celebrities lined the wall and was visited by the mayor every year. Headmistress Child Murderer knew Percival's greatest dream was to work at the haunted house. Oh, it's my greatest dream. And so she ensured that he was never allowed to see it, forced to peel potatoes every Halloween. One Halloween, when Percival was 12, he tried to escape the potato kitchen through the air ducts of the orphanage. He refused to listen to the headmistress's many warnings about disobedience, and during the process of escaping, his leg was tragically caught between two vents. 
trapping him in the pipes above the orphanage. He started screaming for help, but his screams blended into the Halloween ambiance CD played at the haunted house. Then things got worse. The spooky Halloween smoke machine was turned on, filling the air duct with suffocating smoke. It was in this moment that Percival first knew that he was going to die. <laughs> oh my god! I now know that I'm going to die! <laughs> Unfortunately for Percival, at that moment, the visitors to the haunted house complained about it being too cold, and the headmistress agreed to turn on the heat in the orphanage, which she usually doesn't do. Over the next 25 minutes, Percival was cooked alive in the pipes. His last thoughts were, I should have obeyed, and all children should listen to their parents or guardians. The end. Well, that's kind of a brutal Halloween story to tell me, Dad. It's true. It's a true Halloween story. Dad, this is this is bullshit story for ha- this is this is supposed to be it's my Halloween story. It's a good story, story with a good lesson it's for bull- Halloween. It has a spooky ending, and you should be thankful. Unlike Percival, I let you experience Halloween every year. Dad, can we please listen to a real Halloween story? Oh, I think that was a real. Dad, life. I'm talking about the seriously wrong Halloween special tape. The seriously spooky wrong Halloween stories. special. Halloween Haunts and Spooky Stories is a great tape, but we... Come on, Dad, it's Halloween! Alright, maybe we'll just start it for a little bit, but then you'll go to bed. Yay! Aw, yeah! I'll pop it in, and you have to promise that you're gonna get calm and fall asleep. Welcome back to Sleazy Pete in the Morning! So it is five days until October 31st, the day formerly known as Halloween. This is the second year in a row that Halloween has been banned by the mayor of Wrongtown, citing concerns that Halloween was too scary and irrational. Even just saying boo is punishable by fine under jump scare legislation. And pumpkin growing and distribution is being heavily regulated like nuclear material. A jack-o'-lantern carving civil disobedience action resulted in tear gas and beatings by the police. So what do you think? We're going to the callers tonight. Do you support the mayor's strict ban on Halloween? Uh, I'm easily frightened. I've always been timid and uh, mortally afraid of uh, of Halloween. (sighs) It used to be that on October 31st, from approximately 4.30 to approximately 8.30, I used to sit inside my front door with my hand on my revolver, crying. I was absolutely convinced that one of the waves of knocking children asking for candy, of course I'd never answer it. I was convinced that one of these waves would be real ghosts who were coming to kill me. And anyone who supports bringing back Halloween is a blood drinker. Someone who wants to enslave me, who wants to imprison my life, ruin me, destroy me, and terrorize me. Very interesting call. Next up, Devin, you're on the line. Yeah, I just think that by banning Halloween, Wrongtown is messing with forces it doesn't understand. If you think about it, there's nothing irrational about Halloween. Halloween is when we honor the unknown, the frightening. We wear masks and play with being people other than ourselves. We face our fears in a sacred carnival which celebrates life by ennobling its bitter complexity. We honor the dead and the circularity of life. And the people who want to ban Halloween are probably working for the forces of evil, either intentionally or because they are arrogant sheep who've been treated. Lots of different perspectives in our beautiful city of Wrongtown. Next up on the line, we've got Jackson. Is this Halloween ban the right move? Yeah, I'm just sick to death of all these whining kids begging, literally begging for candy at the door. It's disgusting. (coughs) It's like, hey, why don't you get a child job, earn some child money, and get your own candy by the sweat of your own child brow? Supporting Halloween is like supporting communism. You let them into the institutions and you get anarchy. Children bouncing off the walls on a sugar high. Men marrying ghosts. No. No, we, I say no. The only good Halloween supporter is a dead Halloween supporter. All right, and I'll just turn that off. Talk about emotional blockage. That guy needs a massage pronto. He needs someone to listen to him. He's lonely. He needs a friend. Well, you know what the wise doctor once said? Love is the best medicine. And if it doesn't work, increase increase the the dose. dose. Yeah. (laughs) 
Yep, that's why we painted the words increase the dose on the side of our moving truck. Yes, the wrong boy's motto. I got it tattooed on my knuckles. Love it, by the way. Thanks. Uh, well, I love your increase the dose tattoo as well. Some people said a face tattoo would harm my employment prospects, but that hasn't been my experience at all. Well, it's a great message. It's true, too. It's been all situations. Love is the answer, they say. Why, why, is, why is this traffic taking so long? This is like... We've been here for a while. Yeah, there's all those dancers and jugglers and floats and... Uh, wait, look. Oh, apparently it's called the Founder's Day Parade, so the Founders founder of Wrongtown. Oh, yeah, founder of Wrongtown, Phineas Hermwell Wrong. We still celebrate him every year? That's kind of... Wasn't he, like, canceled for some stuff? I feel like you did some really bad stuff. No, yeah, he was, he was, he was the slave owner and... God personal racist sentiments, I think. And on today of all days, when we're trying to get to this new house we're remodeling as a home for wayward puppies. Yeah, I mean, the puppies are coming in five days on Halloween. The, 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 this, Don't remind me. This is a dream of ours that we've been having for a long time. We really wanted to do something, give back, find a cheap, undervalued property somewhere some sort of manner, you know, something with cobwebs, you know, we don't mind cleaning it up, giving it a fresh coat of paint, and then bringing in as many puppies as possible, troubled puppies, and giving those puppies a good life. Yeah, it's been a dream of both of ours, I think, since we were very young. Yeah. And, and to do so anonymously, yeah, to, to, uh, yeah. it's important to, we're not going to be broadcasting, oh, look at this great thing we're doing with these puppies, because seeking too much glory could be a sort of toxic, a cursed chalice, you know, like a Halloween haunt, something that promises one thing and then... It's like a monkey paw. Like yeah, a monkey the, paw. Yeah, it's, be I'm, careful what you wish for. Yeah, you yeah, that kind of... And, no, that's why we avoid all that. That's what the pursuit of power is like in general, and so that's why we do our puppy farm work anonymously. Oh, uh, we're getting a call from the real estate office here. I'll uh, put it on speakerphone. Hey, wrong boys. Uh, this is Heather from the real estate office. I I'm not supposed to be calling you, but... Hi, Heather. Hey, Heather. Look, don't tell anyone that you heard it from me, but that spooky manor we just sold you is so haunted. It's, it's just really haunted. You know, skeletons, blood from the walls, ghosts. Uh, oh, we uh, don't believe yeah, in that stuff, uh, Heather. That's, uh, I mean, thank you for calling, but... They banned Halloween, Heather, but thanks for the prank. We won't tell. No, I'm serious. The last two dozen owners of this place, they've either died, they've sold the place saying it was haunted, disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Everyone loses money on this house. Like, because as long as you own the house, the spirits follow you. That's the thing. It's, you see, this is bad. Sorry, wrong boys, but this is just bad stuff. I just had to tell you. Bye. Uh, well, methinks incredible claims uh, <laughs> require incredible evidence. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. let's use some Absolutely. skepticism here. I, you know, I didn't want to be too rude to Heather on the phone there, but it's just like, come on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a great deal for us. Like, we wouldn't have been able to afford such an enormous mansion if, if irrationality didn't still exactly. have its hold yeah. over, unfortunately, far too many humans. I mean, for example, you apparently have apparently even humans at the real estate agent office. We which... have astrology in newspapers, but no astronomy. Hmm. Yeah. You said it. You said uh, it. Let's start from first principles. First principle. Heather, you're a doofus. <laughs> uh, come on. That's not a first principle. Leave that's, us alone. <laughs> but it's kidding. true. But it's not. Just joking. Just a little fun between principle. friends. I wouldn't say this on the phone with her, but I'm not mean like that. It's not personal. It's just I'm riffing on it. I would say Heather is being a doofus, not that she is a doofus. I don't want yeah, to. Yeah. Important distinction. Yeah. yeah. I believe that Heather can come around and see the light of empiricism and rationality Absolutely. and stop believing in ghost stories. Maybe we could even personally prove it to her by, you know, when the house isn't haunted and we, right, we have a successful dog home. We can invite her out and have her pet the puppies and maybe yeah. she'll make a donation. And, Absolutely. And I bet she will. Oh, we're getting another call. It's from the puppy distributor. Oh, this will be fun. Hello. Talk to me. Hello, my name is Beatrice, and I'm calling from the Puppy Adoption Agency. Hey, Beatrice. Beatrice! Good to hear from you. Hope you're well. How are the kids? Always great to hear your voice, B. The kids are great, everything's great, and I just wanted to confirm your shipment of 20,000 distressed and medically unwell puppies is moving forward, zero hiccups, and the delivery should come in five days on the day formerly but not currently known as Halloween. You love to hear it. Good to hear it, Beatrice. That's awesome. All according to schedule. You're a rock star, B. Just to be crystal clear, I'm legally obligated to make sure that you're aware that because of the fragile state of these puppies, they cannot be exposed to anything, even remotely frightening. 
paranormal, out of the ordinary, anxiety, or terror inducing. They need a happy, wholesome environment where they can rest and heal. And if anything disrupts their peaceful state, many, if not all, of these 20,000 puppies will have heart attacks and instantly die painful, horrifying deaths. You will be held legally accountable for cruel and unusual treatment of animals. You boys got all that? Got it. Yeah, yep. no problem. Yes and yes. Yep. Checkerino, Beatrice. We got five days, so we're going to be putting up some good fencing, you know, soft stuff on the corners. Let me tell you, we stopped off at the wrong town PetSmart, and we bought them out on toys, calming toys <laughs> yeah. for puppies. We picked the calming ones because we know that these are, you know, easily spooked and fragile little pups, and yeah. we wanted to make sure that we had a soothing array of toys because obviously we want to protect their fragile little hearts. And I'm going to be making a playlist of cute videos that I think these puppies are going to love. They're going to calm the puppies. We're going to have a whole room set up for them to just watch cute videos and puppies can come and go as they please. Whole wall projector, sort of. Soothing, yeah. Oh yeah, it's going to be top of the line. And we don't do it for ourselves, Beatrice. We, we do it for the puppies, ultimately. I no, think. Yeah, I'd be like, watching the newest prestige TV show on that projector if it was for me, but since right. it's for the puppies, like I, that could startle but them. We, we just found that the dogs were too often startled by watching the new prestige television shows, and we just had to take that off the list early on. And, and this, Say no, it's going to be cute videos. Yeah, you don't think twice about this stuff when you have the puppy's best interest at heart. It sounds like you boys got everything taken care of. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we definitely taken do. Taken care of in yeah. a half, and we don't believe in ghosts. What do you mean? It's a, is it a haunted house or something? Or well, no, 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 no. hauntings. No. Not it's not a real. No, it's not. It's not haunted. It's not. It's it's neither alleged to be nor in fact haunted. Yeah, I mean, even that if it was of. alleged to be, right, it, it wouldn't matter because it's not real. That we're aware of, at least. Yeah. Hey, who's that old guy standing in front of our new house? Why don't you roll down the window? Rotted haunt where nightmares dwell, fears unfaced will only swell. Betwixt the world's barriers dissolve, hard-hearted dead, business unsolved. Nights unhallowed, monsters unleashed, all out of love within us beasts. So sweet, good-hearted puppy hosts, beware this home of spooky ghosts. Uh, okay, uh, thanks for the warning, I guess. It's an awkward moment, but okay. Oh, where are my manners? I'm your neighbor, Harold. I uh, just live up the street there in the red house. Cool, nice to meet you. Love you, Harold. Stop by sometime. The blood red house. <laughs> All right, see you later. Bye. Bye, Harold. All right, we'll open that up, and here it is. Wow. Well, it doesn't look haunted to me. <laughs> hello, are there any ghosts in here? Hello, hello, Ooh, hello. It's haunted. Oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem like uh, there's any ghosts. Wait, do you hear a little, there's a rustling sound? Is that? Oh, it's a little black cat. Oh. Walking right in front of us. Look at that. It's so cute. Oh, my God. Are you our little buddy? Oh, look at it. Meow. Hey, kitty, do you want to be our cute little apprentice slash sidekick slash animal friend? I will name him Midnight after Midnight Halloween. Midnight the cat. <laughs> I'll call up the dog food company and get one order of cat food added to our 20,000 orders of dog food. What's that, Midnight? Do you want me to follow you down into oh. the basement? Oh, you want to show us something, Midnight? Wow, what a smart cat. Look, it's pawing at this, the, the this door. door. Out. You got the key rings, right? Let's, uh, let's try it out. Uh, no. None, none of these keys work on this door. Huh. This is supposed to be the skeleton key that opens any lock in the house. So strange. I guess we'll have to call a locksmith. Yeah. Or maybe there's a ghost behind it. Oh no, a ghost maybe is <laughs> jammed, holding the door shut. Jammed it and yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fat chance. Whoa, um was that ventriloquist doll? Was that in here when we first came in here? Uh I don't think so. That that's my ventriloquist doll from the truck, but I didn't bring it in yet. Did I? My, I must have had it with me when yeah. we came in. No, that makes sense. Yeah, you, you probably were carrying it under your arm. We didn't. Could have sworn I packed it away in like the very back of like, no, the No, I remember that truck, too, but, but I mean, it, does, it just doesn't 
maybe it's possessed. It's possessed. Oh, it's gonna come and kill us. <laughs> and that's why it has a little knife in its hand, a kitchen knife. Yeah, that's. Our... Uh, you must have. Did you put the kitchen knife in its hand? I assume. So. I don't remember doing it, but I assume that I did. You're like, it's gonna kill us. I'm or gonna put this did? knife in his hand. No. Uh, I mean, it does sound that like is something my kind I of would... joke. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember doing it, but I probably. I guess I must have. Yeah. We gotta clear out some of these cobwebs. They said it. Co- it comes with a whole bunch of furniture, and I think there's a piano, which. I feel like I'm hearing it, maybe. Oh, yeah. No, maybe it's about a player piano. It's a, right. it's a mechanical yeah. piano that plays by Oh, itself. it's in here. It's in here. Come here. It, no, yeah, it doesn't look like it's plugged into anything. Or... Yeah, no, there's no fingerprints in the dust either. Hmm. Huh. Maybe just the wind blowing the, like, the strings. Maybe one of the neighbors is playing the acoustics as such that another neighbor playing their oh, piano yeah, no, that, found its way into this room. That makes the most sense, yeah. Oh, real funny, Aaron. Bringing that doll in here with us again? Oh, I thought you brought the doll in here again. Did you replace maybe... his eyes with angry eyes? I didn't know that he had changeable eyes. And the... Yeah, I don't know. The whole brow shape is different on the doll than it was. The brow is usually up. But now it's like down in the middle. Yeah, like it's angry. got a real like, anger to it. Like, yeah, huh? Sorry, doll. We must have offended you. <laughs> we must have changed that out. Hey, did you notice that? Like, here, put your hand right here in this spot. It's like, that's like freezing oh, cold. Like, yeah. I, I, that's like it almost hurts to keep your hand there. It's so cold. Yeah, it's just that one spot, eh? Yeah, it's bizarre. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Wind, eh? Wind yeah, or, the draft, the wind, the cold spot must have been the wind that also yeah, there's, the, made the door shut. Probably just drafty. What is this? That looks like Satanist runes on the floor. Maybe some previous owners got up into some weird stuff. Either a previous owner or someone who came in the night to hear the stories and they want to be, you know, kind oh, of... Oh, like, yeah, like a group of kids had like a midnight society type of thing where they would break into this house and tell stories in a circle in yeah. this room. Well, That's have to put up a sign letting them know that those days are right. over. This is going to yeah, be a place for dogs, puppies to heal. A wholesome and... healing center for puppies. Anonymously. Oh, you, you hate to see that. Where's this spilling from? It looks like... Um, it's like a sticky, like, cherry syrup or something? Yeah, some yeah. cherry syrup is spilling out from underneath this door. Huh. Uh, it's um, kind of... It doesn't taste like cherry. It tastes like tin. Let me taste this. So. Yeah, no, like, um, metallic. Meta- yeah. Metallic. What kind of syrup is that? Here, I'll just try a little know. bit more. Well, I guess we got to open the door. All right, so I'll just get out that skeleton key, unlock the door, and... Oh, my, oh my God. God. Okay. He's been murdered. There's a, there's a, there's a guy here. There's, there's a guy. He's, he's been stabbed a bunch of times. I've never he's seen been... so much blood. Oh, my God. Oh, oh sorry. Just close the door. Get this. Yeah. What did I say? Okay. Um, what do we do? We'll have to... Oh, we have to clean this up before That would have terrified them. the puppies if they had seen it. Oh, yeah. Thank goodness we came here before them. Yeah. Here. Okay. Let's just open it one one more time and get a good description of the murder victim. Yeah, and before maybe just, we call. I'll close more. You can close your eyes. Let's preserve your childlike innocence and I'll take on the trauma of this one. Oh, It'd would you? Yeah, yeah, there's just no need close for your both eyes, of put us over your to eyes, like, the be more traumatized. And yeah. like, you know, the see no evil monkey. And right, I'll just right, get right. the description. Thank you so much. That's so nice of you. I know you do the same for me and I, I figure... Next time, yeah. Let's, next let's time I'll look at the Let's minimize the, the total distribution thing. of yeah. trauma. Cool. Eyes closed. And I'll just open this up now to observe the badly. Huh. That bad, hey? You're speechless. Uh, Aaron, uh, you might want to open your eyes. What? Do you cleaned it up already? It's, it's just a, it's an a empty normal tool clo- closet. Yeah, it's empty. That's that's not how it was before. Or well, was... sometimes I've heard about collective hallucinations and delusions. Right. We're both tired, so... Yeah, we are both tired. It's a coincidence we both saw the same thing, I think, right? He was a... It looked like a murder victim with, you know, yeah, half-moon like spectacle glasses. Yeah, yeah, maybe like a professor or a... Exactly, uh, yeah. Kind of like that sweater you see professors wear all the time. Professor yeah. vibe. We maybe go, we just go to bed. Time to sleep, I think, I if you were having this kind of... Uh, we, we should go to the master bedroom and... Yeah, hop in the bunk beds and just... We'll pick this up in the morning once we've yeah, slept. Yeah, we get some rest. Uh, Sh- Sean, are you awake? Yeah. Yeah. 
What, what is it? Like, you're hearing all this, right? It's not just me. I, I think it's the house settling. I think there must be some chains hanging in a place where a window is open and causing a draft, and the right house is the settling. Attic. Yeah. Doesn't that sound like a person moaning? But maybe it's just water going through the pipes, or... Water going through the pipes, yeah, yeah. And I mean, if it did sort of sound like it was saying, like, help, and moaning, right. I think it was probably just water in the pipes. I actually just had a crazy dream. I was asleep for a second, mm. and I dreamt that this specter, this floating skull woman glowing white and with black tendrils was floating in the room with us, looking at us, and I had this feeling of deep dread in me, like I was being judged, like I was being known, uh, and that I could be sacrificed or I could be spared. But then I woke up, and then I was back in the room, I guess, and... Sean, did the specter you saw look like that? Ghost! Okay, that's it. I, I, I'm, I'm calling the Chalif Department right now. This has got to stop. This, that's a Wait, real ghost. Wait, hold on, hold on a second, Sean, 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 Sean. What are the Chalif gonna do against a ghost? Something that shoot it. Wouldn't the bullet go right through? Yeah, I guess it would. You're right. Okay. Look, if this house really is haunted, this is gonna be a big problem for us. The puppies, the twenty thousand vulnerable puppies. They can't be scared even, or spooked. We could deal with ghosts, we can deal with being scared, but those puppies, they can't. We made a legally binding agreement. All right, bright and early tomorrow, we get up and get these ghosts out. The following episode of Wrongtown Morning News is brought to you by... Is your greatest fear ending up alone forever? Are your dreams haunted by the worry that nobody likes you and nobody will ever truly see or understand you and approve of you as a person? You're not alone. Well, you are alone, but you're not the only one who's alone. Our friends at the tech giant Xenon Group have a solution. The Silent Man, an AR installation in your eye which makes a silent, supportive man the Silent Man, already waiting in any room you enter. This Silent Man in a black-rimmed hat will smile supportively, give a small wave, or even sometimes a thumbs up. Whether you're at work, on a hike, receiving some difficult news at the doctor's office, or entering a toilet stall, the Silent Man will be there, waiting, offering approval. With our bustling Silent Man Marketplace, you can purchase upgrades that will allow you to dress your Silent Man however you like, change your Silent Man's age or gender, or resize your Silent Man into a giant or a tiny doll-sized person. One thing that won't change is that the Silent Man will always watch you, approvingly. I love my Silent Man. He's always watching me. His eyes follow me around the room. Wherever I go, I'm the center of attention for once. Yeah, he's always watching. He's always watching. He's always watching. Always. The silent man is always watching. Always watching. Never be lonely again with Xenon Group's Silent Man. Today's sponsor of Wrongtown Morning News. The Silent Man AR is an eye implant that cannot be removed. Talk to your doctor about which payment plan is right for you. It is four days until the day formerly known as Halloween. Here are our top stories on Wrongtown Morning News. This year's Founders Day Parade was a smash hit, with everyone extolling the incredible virtue of Wrongtown's founder, Phineas Hermwell Wrong. Protesters who objected to his well-documented racism, sexism, anti-indigenous racism, his funding of the local eugenics movement, and the alleged murder of his wife attempted to pull down the Phineas Wrong Greatness statue at City Hall, but were kettled and tear-gassed by Wrongtown police. The Wrongtown's mayor told us, Founders Day is about recognizing the untarnished greatness of our pristine and angelic founder not about cancel culture. In response, we are going to make sure these protesters are blacklisted, unable to work, and socially ruined in every way. 
The generous and more than human geniuses at Xenon Group have set a new record for charitable donations this year to the Wrongtown Hospital, funding a state-of-the-art and first-of-its-kind blood center. The CEO of Xenon Group had this to say to reporters. Children suffering from diseases of the blood and families can rest easy knowing this new blood win will cut wait times and empower the medical community to understand blood better than ever before. We take the health of children's blood very seriously. Ah, 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 ah. There has been an increase in mysterious activity around Wrongtown ever since Halloween has been banned, leading some to speculate there may be a connection. For example, I need not remind you of the dancing skeletons in the distance terrorizing us all with their menacing dance. We're joined now by an expert in Halloween and Halloween policy from the mayor's office. Uh, thank you for being here with us. As the liaison from the mayor's office, I just want to start by unequivocally stating there is no reason to think that a rupture has opened up between our world and the world of spirits. But what could possibly explain a headless horse person at the Wrongtown Mall throwing flaming jack-o'-lanterns into Wrong Burger, into Wrongtown plus size women's wear? What could possibly naturalistically explain that? There's a few possibilities here. There are instances of collective hallucination. It may also be a sophisticated special effects network producing doctored videos. There's also the possibility that these headless horse people are a new type of species that has just recently evolved. It may also be a prank, a reaction show like a Borat type thing or punked operating in Wrongtown without a license. We've gotten reports that there are dancing skeletons at the graveyard and Wrongtown police which have tried to stop them from dancing themselves had their skeletons burst out of their flesh in a quite disgusting and gory display and then join the other skeletons in dancing. What does the mayor's office make of this? If you do not approach these skeletons, if you leave them alone, they will leave you alone. What's clear is that dancing skeletons are a rare, and we think precious, natural phenomenon, and that there's great potential for tourism here. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, and finally, there are accusations that the mayor, after taking power and being elected, changed for the worse, almost like a Jekyll and Hyde, or a werewolf whose full moon was the maintenance of his own power, becoming kind of a wild beast of self-interest and, and corporate donations. <laughs> Look, the accusation that our mayor is a werewolf is absolutely wrong. It's inappropriate. Werewolves don't exist. He's not a werewolf. <laughs> Where do you guys come up with this stuff? <laughs> the mayor's a werewolf. He doesn't change with the full moon. And to the best of our knowledge at the mayor's office, no one does at all. And the mayor is not, not a werewolf. And that, those so repeated not. Not not a werewolf? Is that, are you saying that he is a werewolf when you say not not? No, I'm just emphasizing not. Those are, that's not a double negative, it's just... So he's not 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 a werewolf? He's not 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 a werewolf. He is not a werewolf. So he isn't a werewolf? No, he's not. Right. He just isn't. All right? Well, there you have it from the mayor's office itself. Uh, we'll be back after the break with how to protect yourself from the invisible gnomes that exist outside of your point of view and move your remote around and so on. Stay with us. Hey, Sean, uh, turn the radio off. We're getting a call from our best friend, Brains. I love Brains. Hey, Brains. Brains, hey. Talk to me. Hi, wrong boys. It's great to hear your voice, my man. Brainsy. You are a lifesaver with this research. You know, we don't know what we'd do without you. It's no problem. I'd do anything for my best friends. Right back at you, Brainsy. According to my research, the house that you two purchased for your puppy sanctuary was built on the site of a colonial massacre of indigenous Wrongtonians. Uh, oh, no. And the house was first built as a slave house in the colonial pre-Wrongtown era, later the site of the Wrongville witch burnings, where hundreds of innocent Wrongville women were burned at the stake. Uh-huh. Okay. Ooh. After that, it was remodeled as an asylum for the criminally insane. 
And the headmaster of the asylum was himself criminally insane, and he killed the criminally insane in the asylum for his own fun burying them underneath the floorboards. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> How do you I told you to look up the spooky history. I thought there might be one. <laughs> right. One, but things are starting to make sense. And then, after that, it was sold and taken over as an orphanage by an awful headmistress who abused the children in her care and used them for slave labor. Uh, in fact, it's the mythical asylum of the potato peeler on Halloween. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wrong That's kind of cool. It feels like a celebrity house now. My dad used to read me that story every night before bed, even in non-Halloween season. I loved the animated version. That song about burning alive? So scary. Uh, and since then, it's cycled through a number of owners who either die mysteriously, uh, for example, a professor was stabbed in the broom closet there. Other people sell it relatively quickly, citing its dark energy. It seems to be a haunted house, boys. Oh, <sighs> jeez. Uh, well, you got any good news? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Give us something we can work with, brains. What do we do about it? From everything I can tell, the only way to make it not haunted and therefore to keep your puppy safe when they arrive in just four days is to have a seance that first channels the spirits and then puts them to rest by helping them finish their unfinished business. Okay. A seance, okay. yeah, no, that's yeah. doable. That's, that's doable. Uh, that's really helpful. You'd have to gather some people together with big hearts and a lot of love and good vibes to do it for the right reasons, and uh, otherwise you might become overpowered by the evil, and, and uh, God knows what would happen there. And there have been myths in Wrongtown of a portal to some sort of twisted netherworld that when it's open causes people's worst nightmares to come true, their greatest fears. Uh, maybe that has something to do with this. Thank you so much, Brain. That's you are for a lifesaver. That is... You're a rock star, dude, Brains. We knew we could count on you. You are our best friend. Absolutely, definitely. So thank you so much. We'll see you later at the seance. Yeah, you're going to be there, right? Okay, peace. We'll talk to you later. Oh, <sighs> damn. So, uh, our greatest fears. Heavy it's, stuff. It's kind of freaking me out. My worst fear, if I can confess, is, um, you sure, know, yeah. aging in a way that I, I, I lose myself in the process. You know, I, I lose my mind. I forget who I am and I, I just can't do the things I used to do and, and I lose myself. That's what I'm afraid of. My worst, deepest fear is bugs. Like all bugs? Yeah, all bugs. Does it have to be a lot of them? or? I mean, it's worse if there's a lot of them. But, but even just one or a few? Yeah. Just crawl up in there, crawl all around you or near you or on you. Ooh. Well, my good sir, well, if I see any bugs, I shall squish them for you. I shall kill them. Oh, thank what are you. friends for? That's a relief. And if you lose your mind as you age... I will help you get groceries and Aww. stuff. I'll help with your daily life. I'll look after you. Well, all I know is that whatever happens to us, if we face it with the healing power of love, nothing will be able to stop us. Yes, that is true. You know what they say, if the medicine doesn't work, increase, increase the, the dose. dose. Hey, someone left their jacket here. I oh, think that was that mysterious old yeah, man. Yeah, the old man, Harold, Harold, the guy who gave us the cryptic the warning. warning. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He just lives up the street. Well, he, he seems like he has a big heart. Maybe we could invite him. Yeah, bring him to the seance. Yes. That's a good idea. Let's do it. Hello? Anybody home? Harold, we got your jacket. Uh, hello? Hey, we got this jacket from Harold. We wanted to invite him to come to a little seance. Yeah, we just moved in on up the street the and uh, we met him. He gave us a cryptic warning. This... This is Harold's jacket. I don't know how you got this, but Harold has been dead for 22 years. Oh. What? Uh, 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 well, but, uh, we, uh, okay, thank oh, you, ma'am. Thank yeah, you. I, I, sorry to bother you. Okay, that is the craziest thing that has ever happened Harold to me. Harold was a ghost all along? We just met him yesterday. He seemed so alive. You know who might be good for the seance thing is... Mm -hmm. The real estate woman, Heather, who warned us. Oh, yeah, gave us the tip about she, the house being she haunted. She knows about ghosts. She knows it's haunted. Right. Maybe she might want to get involved. And it sounded like she had a big heart. She was, Absolutely, yeah. Uh, let's just give her a ring. Hello, real estate office. Hey, hey uh, yeah. can we please just be patched Patch over to Heather? To Heather? Heather. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but Heather, Heather died in a skiing accident six years ago. She was a loved member of the office, but no, no, she, I, can't, I can't connect you to her. She's, she's been dead for quite some time. Wait, what? Did she, um, er, well, 
Okay, well, thank you, sir. Well, uh... Yeah, running out of people, we can ask for the seance. But you know who I bet is a sure bet? Beatrice from the puppy adoption agency. Oh, I love Beatrice. Oh, my God. If she could yeah. make it to the seance. B will make it. She B, is have... amazing. Yeah, she. I agree. Let's just dial her up. Uh, puppy adoption agency. Hey, buddy, we're big hey. clients of um, Beatrice, so can we just get patched through to yeah, Beatrice, please? Beatrice has been helping us puppy with 20,000 puppies. and Puppy-related business. Oh, I'm sorry, you must be calling the wrong number. Or, or wait, maybe you mean Beatrice. Yeah, I think she hasn't been at the company for quite some time. I think she actually passed away. What's that? Oh, yeah, inoperable brain tumor, 1997. Uh... Ooh. Okay. That's uh, weird. Okay, well... Thank you. Thank you for your time. This is getting weirder by the minute. If Beatrice isn't real, like, are you a ghost? Uh, I don't, I don't think so. Try pinching me. Ow! Uh, oh, it hurt, but probably wouldn't hurt if you were a ghost. I'm not actually sure what that... Probably not, yeah. I don't actually know enough about ghosts. Maybe they can be pinched. You want to try pinching me? Ow! Well, at least we know we can both experience pain. Right, I'm pretty sure ghosts can't. Yeah, let's well, working theory for now. Working theory. Hello, wrong boys, I'm here. You ready for a seance? Brains. Brains! Hey, you made it. Big boy, cool guy. This is our new place. Can you see puppy sanctuary or what? Sorry about the cobwebs. We're working on getting it cleaned up. Yeah, we meant to do it right away, but <laughs> haunted house. I love the place, guys. It's... Cool ventriloquist dummy. Who brought him here and put the knife in his hand? Oh, you know, we keep doing that and forgetting me. about I, it. I, I, I forgot, know. but I probably did it. Stupid. Uh, I feel like I'm losing my mind sometimes getting older, you know. Ooh, kitty cat. Oh, come, come here. Give him a pet. His name is Midnight. He likes fish. He's like our little pal, I guess, our little friend. Oh, come here, Midnight. Yeah, you're going to help with the seance, aren't you? He's a good cat. Good cat. Such a beautiful black color, and the way he walks back and forth like that. Yeah, that's kind of his thing. We feel blessed to have found him. We got everything you said that we needed. Candles, uh, table, amulets. Just one small holdup, which is that everyone that we tried to invite to participate in the seance, it turned out that they were a ghost. So it's just going to be us, but we think three people with really big hearts. We've got, Wait, big, we got big really, hearts. really big hearts. It'll be fine. We'll be able to contain the evil energy. Well, we don't have much of a choice at this point. Let's get to it. Uh, so we'll just lay out these candles. Pour the salt circle on the ground. Turn off the light if you want to take your, your seat. Brains. Uh, and you're sort of at the head of the table there. And we'll sit on either side. And we'll hold hands. Three-way handhold circle. Now that that's out of character for us, considering we're best friends. Uh, do you need more candles? That's enough. Wait, yeah. Okay, good. Aaron, well, you do the honors. Uh, okay, yeah, I guess I could. O oh, spirits of the house, we approach thee humbly with open hearts and bountiful love. We ask that you make your presence known to us. Oh, this is like candle song. Ask them about the unfinished business. To any spirits, we ask you, have you any unfinished business that we can help you with? We want to help. We want to... Brains, are you, are you okay? My name is Percival. I'm a little orphan boy. But like from, from Percival the, from the story? From the story. Oh my god. It's oh like meeting god. a celebrity. I can't believe he's the ghost in our house. Oh my god, Brains, lucky. I tried to escape to experience Halloween just one time. Headmistress child murderer killed me. She buried me in the yard. Percival, no, you... You died by accident in the events, remember? It was a like lesson story? about you should listen. Yeah, about obedience? Percival, what is your unfinished business? Just one Halloween. I want to experience one Halloween. Oh, awkward. He, they just banned Halloween. It's... Yeah, it's not allowed anymore, Percival. <laughs> Percival? Per Brains? Brains, Percival? are you back? I will slit all the throats of Rokta. Percival? The streets running with blood and flame. Hell on earth. Come on, Brains. This isn't funny. <laughs> yeah, yet. not funny, Brains. We get it. You got to be inhabited by Percival. Does it make you better than us? It's rude. Sean and Aaron don't know what they're messing with. I will teach them pain. He's 
sort of being an asshole. That's getting a little personal. <laughs> Brains. Brains. Brains, are you okay? There's something I have to tell you, boys. There's, there's portals open. The, the only way that we can close it is to... <laughs> Zombies! No, oh, you put him down. That's our best friend, Brains. They're, they're eating him. They're eating no, Brains. Brains. That's my best friend. And I'm have you ever used a gun before? No time like the present. Stay, you friend. You ain't friends. Xenon Group Headquarters. Oh, I'm sorry, the CEO can't talk right now. He's in a board meeting. Can I take a message? Oh, thank you, thank you very much. So things are going well at Xenon Group. All of our upper management is vampires, but other than that, blood. I want to drink it. Blood center. Fund another blood center. I think we will be able to fund another blood center soon with all the profits we're raking in from the Silent Man surveillance system. Not only does it allow us to see what everybody is doing at all times, it allows us to send them personalized ads that have been bankrolling our operations. We can also use that surveillance information to do vampiric things in the darkness. I just wanted to talk about the zombie outbreak. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we had a chemical we were spritzing at the Xenon Group Mall that would, you know, make people want to purchase more things. And unfortunately, we, we mixed up the ratios, the parts per million, and we released a deadly gas that turned them into contagious, mindless, flesh-eating creatures. Is there any way we can make a profit off of that? Our technicians are working on that first and foremost. We will find some way to make money off of this, no matter what the human cost is. Yes, hopefully that's dealt with that soon. Oh, we're getting a phone call from the mayor of Wrongtown. Quiet, everyone. I'll just take this call. CEO to mayor. Let's just... Hello, you've reached Xenon Group. Mr. CEO, great to hear from you. A bit of bad news, I think. We really do have to unban Halloween. Oh, why's that? Uh, there's been a rash of children being possessed. You know, they're like crawling around on the ceilings, turning their heads 360 degrees, their flesh is mottled, and they're running around, crawling on their back on all fours like a spider singing spooky lullabies. And families are my main constituency, so I'm sorry, I know I made a promise, but I can't. Mayor, I don't think you want to flip-flop on this. It might not be good for your reputation. If what you're thinking is that banning Halloween caused the boundaries between the worlds to open up, bringing about a permanent Halloween on Earth, where vampires rule the night for 10,000 years of darkness, well, that is unsubstantiated one, and two, a frankly vicious accusation. So our lawyers will expect a retraction by tomorrow from your office, thank you very much. And no, we will not be unbanning Halloween. You gotta stick to your word on this, man. You flip-flop too much, everyone's tired of it. The whole city's tired of it. Right, right, well, yeah, we banned it because it's too scary. And I should have principles on that. Okay, I'll figure it out. And on a personal note, Mr. CEO, thank you for the check that I got this morning to my campaign. That gift is gonna go a long way, a huge difference to my political fortunes. Yeah, I wanted, while I had you on the phone, I wanted to thank you. Sorry, what's that? It's a, it's a full moon tonight? Okay, I, I gotta go. It's almost sundown, so I'll see you. Bye bye, Mayor. Dark Lord, sir, we've gotten a tip that something threatens our evil plan to create a permanent Halloween on Earth where vampires rule the night for 10,000 years. Two badass leather wearing, sunglasses donning, you, you name it, they're badasses. And they're out there killing tons of vampires and zombies. Their sworn goal is to unban Halloween and close the portal between worlds. And their names are Sean and Aaron, and they host the Seriously Wrong podcast, which is comedy, poly like they do sketches sometimes and interviews, sometimes whole sketch episodes. It's good. It's good. Um, anyways, patreon.com slash seriously wrong. But I think we have to do something about them. Hmm. 
We have ways of dealing with people like Sean and Aaron. We now go to Sean and Aaron, decked out in cool leather outfits and sunglasses, fighting hordes of zombies to new metal with elaborate and badass gun and sword choreography. <laughs> It's been two days since our best friend Brains was torn apart and eaten alive in front of us. The streets of Wrongtown are now fully overrun with zombie filth. Everywhere people are under attack. The undead walk the earth, destroying our homes. Two-faced werewolves run wild through our institutions. Corporate vampires hunting human for sport. The only one who stands between these monsters and the people is us, Sean and Aaron from the Seriously Wrong Podcast. The time for love is over. Get out of my town. Without brains to keep us grounded, violence has become the only order of our lives. He's the one who reminded us to be guided by love and not vengeance. Now that we've lost him, all that we have left to us are the blade and the bullet. We write our checks in blood and cash them at the bank of death. The first time I killed a civilian while slicing and shooting through hordes of zombies, a few days ago, I was horrified. I vomited. We cried. Now it happens more often than I can count. I have to be okay with it. It's the cost of war, the cost of self-defense, the cost of stopping or hesitating will be worse. We know now who banned All Hallows' Eve, Xenon Group which, like all corporations, is run by blood-sucking vampires. They want to sundown Wrongtown into a permanent night to rule us from above for 10,000 years. We got the full story from one of the vampires we captured during battle. Said he wanted to clear his conscience. We slit his throat. The children of Wrongtown say that we're heroes. They practice swinging swords around in sunglasses. They mime shooting each other. They use our catchphrase, the time for love is over. But we worry they won't be ready for battle in time to make a difference. Halloween is tomorrow, and we're no closer to getting it legalized than we were when we started. Which means we can't put the ghost of Percival the Orphan to rest. Which means we can't unhaunt our haunted house. Which means that 20,000 vulnerable puppies who we are sworn to protect will die. Take that and that. This is our town. Oh, getting a phone call. Oh, puppy adoption agency. Uh, hello. Hey there. Hi, wrong boys. Uh, just a follow-up courtesy call from the puppy adoption agency. How are you guys doing? Oh, great. Pretty good. Thanks. Yeah, we're things are going well. How are you? Can't complain. Uh, so listen, we got these 20,000 puppies uh, coming in tomorrow, and these are extremely vulnerable puppies. If they're scared at all, they will surely die. I just wanted to confirm that you uh, are ready and legally ready to accept legal liability and are ready to receive these puppies tomorrow on Halloween. Yeah, no problem. We're ready. Oh, yeah. We, we can't wait. We're excited. Thanks for the call. We're elbow deep in something right now. Can yeah, we... we're just getting ready well, for we'll the puppies. We'll see you tomorrow. So. Uh, that's all. Thanks, boys. You take those ones, I'll take these ones. Take that, zombie motherfucker. Oh, Sean, look out behind you. Oh, ow. It's a tranquilizer dart. It's. Oh, oh, it's a tranquilizer. Xenon group. We have this. Stay away. Xenon. He passed out. Perhaps the fully not real. Where are we? Uh, we're in some sort of deadly puzzle box that was set up by the Xenon group. I think the they're going to kill us group. in here. Puzzle box? Oh yeah, there's blood all over. and Looks like old torture devices. Yeah, there's spikes on the walls. And actually, the if you look close, the walls are actually covered in our own worst reviews. The worst reviews of the Seriously Wrong podcast has ever gotten. Not funny at all. Totally boring. Bad takes. I don't know. Oh, I can't, I can't look at it. Oh, I can't believe we got captured. This is, this is it. We're fucked. The puppies are fucked. 
the house is going to stay haunted. Halloween is going to stay illegal. We're going to be fucking crushed to death by our own bad reviews, stabbed through the heart in other places. I can't believe it's come to this. It sucks because we really violated our own values to get here. Yeah. With a lot of that. The, the Everyone post- said it was so pragmatic and like... If you want to win, you got to just take out the zombies and... But they drew attention to us. They made us a target us. of the vampires, yeah. They're going to do play some weird psychological mind game on us. You're going to be killed in here, basically. <laughs> Hello, wrong boys. Do you want to play a game? Sure, yeah, I'm up for whatever. Yeah, yeah. You what guys, kind of games you, you got? You got Catan. Maybe dice, deck of cards. Mario Kart. Oh, Mario chess. Kart, yeah. I've been working on my ELO on chess. But I do love Mario Kart, so right. if we get to choose, I would say Mario Kart. There is a recorder in the center of the room. You are going to record the seriously wrong Halloween tape. As you do it, the spiked walls will close in until you are crushed by your bad reviews, while the water level around you slowly rises. When the water has completely filled the room, the temperature will start to rise to a boil. If your Halloween podcast is a success before then, I will let you go. You have 20 minutes. Have fun! <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I don't, I don't think we can do this. No, no, I need you to put on the Halloween costume of someone who thinks they can do this. Right. Okay. We're not letting those 20,000 puppies die. Here. Oh, and wrong boys. Yes? yes. What? Yeah. You something else for us? Sean. Why don't you ask Aaron what he really thinks of your special pasta? <laughs> oh, that's uh, don't, uh, no need to talk. We gotta record yeah, that's this an interesting comment for him to. Yeah, I don't let's, know. Let's like, try to record this podcast. What's he talking about, though? What's I, the? What do you mean? My I, special um, recipe of pasta. pasta is, yeah. Is there an issue with it? I a dissonance I say between it's your issue, stated. It's, is there a dissonance uh, between your stated position and I what, mean, what you really feel about it? It's a little rich. It's kind of, it's a little rich. You gotta admit, like, a bit much. <laughs> you think your fears have already come true on Halloween, and then... <laughs> uh, Look, I just I I mean, didn't you want to tell, tell you me was... because you were so excited. It's my special, special recipe. Yeah. I make it all the time. It's not that bad. It's, it's just not I... good. It's just... It's not good? What? I mean, like, you know, like... I thought it was just too rich. I mean, it's fine. I'm just saying, it's like a six out of ten. It's not like it's, a it's not bad. It's special pasta. But I mean, is it's it really fine. that special? You make it all the time. It's kind of just like normal it's everyday little, pasta. It's just my signature. That's fine. Look, we have to do the show, no matter yeah. what. These bad reviews are gonna pierce us through the heart and elsewhere if we don't focus right, right. now. Right. No, you're absolutely right. Um, recording device we need to plan this out we need to record it we need to edit okay. it this is going to take the sound end. effects yeah we've got water well up our calves now this will be we're going to be swimming by the end of this yeah yeah let's get to work do, 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 do. Ooh, this is actually a brand of apple juice it's kind of cool maybe i'll try this oh notification on my phone seriously wrong's got a new episode out oh awesome there's signature humor Makes shopping so much more enjoyable. Halloween tape. Oh, that's cool. Okay, yeah, let's let's listen in. <laughs> well, welcome well, to the hey, Seriously Wrong Podcast. To, so I'm Sean, I'm Aaron, and that's Sean. And I'm Sean. Uh, yeah, this is the Halloween tape. Thank you yeah. so much uh, for listening, especially to our patrons. Thank yes. you very much. It's special. It's six dollars a month. Uh, bonus episodes. <laughs> uh, head over to Patreon. We love you. So we don't have much time. Um, so we're going to be putting in this tape. Do you want to put in the tape, Aaron? Yeah. Let's roll over the, card. the table. Roll out the card, and then open up the yeah, tape. Put, put, put in the tape. We'll put the tape. Yeah, the put the tape. And then, do you want to press play or should yeah. I press play? Oh uh, no, you can press. No, I'll press play. Okay, I would like to press play. Okay. Three, two, two one. one. Press play. My monster soon arises. Yes, yes, he's alive. He's alive. <coughs> Whoa, um, uh, I'm, al- I'm alive. What's going on here? You are my monster made of corpse parts. I'm a monster made of corpse parts? And you're alive. Yeah, well, I mean, pretty cool. So this, the, 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 are you my friend? I'd say I'd, I'm more like a creator, oh, fine. guardian fine. slash. Fo- if, if if you want a friend, you feel free to go make friends. It's, I will. I'll go make a friend. Well, I guess. Yeah, I'm alive now. I'm made out of sewn together corpse parts. 
It's a little off-putting. What is this sticking out of my neck? Oh, uh, those are giant bolts I used to shock you alive. All right. Kind of weird. All right. See you later. <clears throat> um, excuse me, uh, friend? Ah! Mommy, mommy, he's a monster. He's trying to kill me, mommy. He's a monster. He's attacking me. <laughs> hey, there's the monster. Get him. Get him. Get him. We gotta string up this monster. He, he's trying to kill kids. He attacked that little this girl. This monster is destroying our community. There, there, sweetheart. Don't cry. They're gonna kill the monster for you. There he is. Get him. Get him. Get him. We're gonna kill the monster. 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 Everybody stop! This monster here is no threat to any of you. He was just looking for a friend. I created him in my laboratory. He's a gentle giant, new to this world. You think that he's a monster, but I think he's revealed the monster in all of you. Willing to kill anyone who looks different from you. Rather than looking outside ourselves, why don't we recognize the monster in our own hearts? Don't we all have giant bolts pointing out of our necks in one way or another? Oh, he's right. This mad scientist oh, is right. I feel so foolish. I feel like I'm a Frankenstein's monster sometimes. Because people misunderstand me when I'm innocent. Hey, Frankenstein's monster, we're so sorry. We You're a man of the people, bad. Frankenstein. Yeah, he is a man of the people. Yeah, he's a good guy. He just wanted to make a friend. I'll be your friend, Frankenstein. No, I'll be your friend. Frankenstein, it looks like you got a big lineup of new friends. I'd do more than be your friend. I'd elect you as president. Frankenstein, I think that you've got the it factor. The je ne sais quoi that voters will respond to. This just in, Frankenstein's monster has been elected in a landslide 50-state victory to the office of the presidency. I've overcome a lot here to reach this tip-top tier of office, and I just want to make sure that we create a beautiful, wonderful society that isn't spooky at all. Mr. President Frankenstein's monster, sir, I have the war plans here that you asked for. Oh, let's see. So in this plan, it's faster and less expensive, but it kills a lot more civilians, is that right? Yeah, we use the unmanned aerial drones guided by AI, sir. They kill indiscriminately, but they're very effective. All right, well, we can't have another budget crisis. I'll be taking that one. Indiscriminate civilian targeting it is. Thank you. You've made the pragmatic choice, sir. Mr. President Frankenstein, the mad scientist who created you is here. Send him in. Hey, Frankenstein! How's it going? You got a lot of nerve showing your face here after I, what you did. Look, put all that aside. I heard about all the civilian casualties. You remember that day, the day I created you and I stood up for you against that crowd of people and I said you weren't a monster? I don't know if I could truthfully say the same thing today. Uh, Secretary, can you send in um, Secret Service here? We've got a hostile interaction. He's got to be taken out. What? No! Se look inside! Audit your inner monstrousness! President Frankenstein, we've got the Make-A-Wish Foundation girl here. Oh, send her in. This will cheer me up. Mr. President Frankenstein, sir, I'm the little girl you tried to make friends with all those years ago who got the crowd to turn against you, and I'm dying of cancer now, and I've always felt so sorry about that day because I was a monster to you. I just wanted to use my last wish to say that I'm sorry for the way you were treated on my behalf, and I hope you can forgive me. My god, little girl, I've been trying so long to prove to everyone I was human. Like them, I've been doing inhumane things. I accept your apology. War General, uh, call off all of the unmanned aerial drone strikes that are going to affect civilians. Yeah, thank you. Ooh, just one second, kid. Hi, Necromancer. We have many thousands of war dead. I was hoping you could bring them back to life as normal human beings. Yeah, not zombies. Yeah, not zombies. If they're zombies, I'll be pissed. It's not like a close enough thing. Okay, yeah, not zombies. Thank you. So yeah, girl, I don't know. Do you want to play some like Mario Kart or something? Yay, Mario Kart! And so President Frankenstein became the first true peace president, officially mandating that Halloween become a time to audit your own inner monstrousness, to try and improve yourself in the next year. 
and to honor those who have died by historic monstrousness, by renewing our commitment to abolishing the monstrousness of our society through social transformation. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, the the true so meaning beautiful. of Halloween gets me every time, even when I'm the one writing and performing it. Yeah. Let's post it right away. Yeah, I think this will really uh, get me through to people's post. And oh, hey, look, we got a nice comment. The reviews are coming in. Everyone loves it. They say it's the greatest Halloween special that they've ever heard. They're going to listen to it every year as a new tradition. Oh my God, it's going viral all across the globe. Oh, the water level's going down. The spike walls are moving away. We, we did it. We proved ourselves to the to the puzzle. The the we did it. We we, we made the Halloween special. It was a success. And we, oh my God, the doors opening. We're free to go. Midnight. Oh, midnight. You're waiting for us outside the door. That's so cute. How'd you know we were in here? <sighs> that is the mark of a true. It probably followed us the whole way here. Was trying to break us out. Weren't you, midnight? Midnight. Trying to break us out. You know, Sean. I was. Just reading those positive comments, one of them said, Wrong boys, you helped me recognize the monstrousness in my own heart. And I was thinking that maybe you and I have some monstrousness in our own hearts that we've needed to recognize. We the, still you need mean to. the indiscriminate slaughter? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That wasn't cool. And one other thing I wanted to say is that I'm really sorry I didn't tell you the truth about what I think about your special pasta. I just didn't want to disappoint you, but I realize I've been carrying on this ruse for years, and it's not fair. Well, thank you. I, I say that I would appreciate the feedback, but I think in the moment you're probably right that there was no good time to tell me. In a weird way, it's the best case scenario because I can work, I can redouble my commitment to innovating in the kitchen and find a signature recipe that everyone loves. This is still part of my library of recipes. It's still going to be in my self-published cookbook but it may not be my signature. All right, now that we've reconnected with the true spirit of Halloween and escaped that deadly puzzle box, we cannot delay anymore. We have to attack the vampires at Xenon Group. We gotta do this right. We gotta make a plan. Oh, hey, warriors, wrong boys, wrong boy, come here. Is that really you? Yeah, it's us, yeah, hi. Hey. Oh, wow, come over here and sit with me for a minute on my front porch here. Kind of busy right now, sorry. Hey, we're sort of in the middle of something, but... Surely you can spare a minute for one of your biggest fans. All right. Okay, okay yeah. Sure. Did you know that fairies and gremlins or underpants gnomes, as they're sometimes called, are, are real? They're these little creatures that exist outside of our vision that pull pranks on us. They're observed all around the world in many cultures, but the mainstream establishment refuses to investigate it. I have heard of that. Yeah, it's a cool little idea. But here's the most important thing, boys. The fairies are on our side. They prank us, but they have our best interests at heart. When the going gets tough, they'll have our back. But they can only work when we look away. Cool, yeah, that's, uh, thanks. I Bye. appreciate that, yeah. Bye, nice to meet you. Right. Oh, crap, I forgot to thank him. Sorry, I'm just gonna go back here and uh, I mean, knock on his door. You thanked him, but I didn't thank him, I feel I bad. feel like it's good enough for both of us. We probably shouldn't even bother. He's probably been dead for 20 years or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He <laughs> probably has happening. been dead for 20 years. Let's just check, let's just check. All right, yeah, we'll see. Uh, knock, knock. Hey, uh, I, I just wanted to thank the guy who lives here. He just gave us a tip when we were walking down the street. Oh, my, Jeremy? No, I'm sorry. He's been dead for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we knew it. We knew it. Okay. Uh, so thanks. Thanks anyway. Shit, man. That's funny. We knew that. But yeah, anyways, uh, about that plan, attacking Xenon Group headquarters. Yeah, so I was thinking, you know, we go in like badasses and maybe half dozen security flunkies, vampires are coming at us and we're staking them, we're flipping over them. He's we're spinning around in circles, slitting all their throats in one fell swoop. They're enemy combatants, obviously, self-defense. Right, right, right. We got to make sure that we give the civilians an out. We don't kill anyone who isn't directly threatening us. We just want to get through the building to the CEO. We're turning over a new leaf here after all. Yeah, yeah. No, we will discern carefully between combatants and non-combatants and only use force proportional to our aims. We'll make sure that civilians are never targeted, even accidentally hit. But this is a war after all. And, you know, if some vampires got to die, they got to die. 
Yeah, and but if one's like, oh, please don't kill me, please don't kill right, me, then, of then you just, just tie him up exactly. and try to find some way to make sure he can't attack or change his mind. But yeah, we'd be dodging vampires' blows, and I think we'll probably pick up a bow staff at some point and impale some of them. Yeah. I think it will uh, work. Uh, it, yeah. I think it would work too, but... I don't know. Something about it just it still doesn't feel right. It's like... It's not guided by the heart enough for you? Yeah, I don't know if that's how you increase the dose. I mean, we are protecting situation. the civilians. Yeah, it's and important. And like, yeah, but... It is self-defense. What if instead of violence, we tried to be a bit more creative and thoughtful? You know, we could move in unexpected ways and use a variety of tactics to undermine and subdue the enemies. With the explicit goal of not taking a single life of any kind. Whoa, whoa. You're saying that even the enemies are a type of civilian? I mean, in a way, aren't we all civilians? I like the sound of this. We can use the blade of creativity and the gun of benevolence. That way we can save Wrongtown, Halloween, and our 20,000 puppies without losing a single life, innocent or guilty. Let's do it. Put our hands together in the center, and uh, what should we say? In increase the dose. Yeah, yeah, perfect. One, two, two three. three. Increase, increase the, the dose! dose! I'm surveying the location and writing out a strategic plan based on points of weakness. Slipping in through the first floor window, and we'll taking out this first two floors with sleeping powder. Putting on sleeping powder resistant mask, and we'll just spread this in front of the vent, and this should knock out a lot of the first wave of people who would raise an alarm about us entering. Now we're just going to use our net guns to non-lethally detain any vampires we happen to come across. To restrain them, but not unduly in the context of self-defense. <laughs> Got him. Man, these neck guns are effective and humane. Doing a fight sequence on the staircase where we're flipping over guys. Flip on up these stairs. I got this guy handcuffed into the railing. Make sure they're all restrained in self-defense in a non-destructive way, but in a way that is sufficient to prevent violence to us. All right, and now we're using the persuasive power of rhetoric to convince a group of vampires to disarm and abandon the Xenon facility because there are puppies in danger and they feel for them. And now we're putting on disguises. We're gonna use these to get by various groups of vampires across multiple floors who are kind of on the boundary between civilian and combatant. You know, if they know they're being infiltrated, they might attack us, but otherwise they're just gonna continue doing their work. They don't deserve to be brought into any fight if it can be avoided, so we're just using a series of disguises to get past them. Now we're outside the CEO's private elevator in our women costumes, uh, charming the secretary into letting us up there. Have a blood delivery for the CEO. Fresh young blood for the CEO. She's letting us use his private elevator. We're getting inside and pressing the big button with the bat on it. Whew, this is it. Yeah, this is the final showdown, they call it. The final showdown. Do you think we'll be forced to fight, or do you think we can... Yeah, do you do think we'll be able to non-violently restrain this vampire CEO, or will we actually have to take one life tonight? What do you think, Midnight? <laughs> oh, Midnight. You've grown to be more than just a little pal to me, Midnight. You're a little friend. I trust you. All right, Mr. Xenon CEO, we gotcha. Jig is up. It's time to legalize Halloween. Yep. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Wrong, boys. Congratulations on the success of your Halloween special. Oh, thank you. I yeah, appreciate that. It was, it was hard, but we pulled it We have it a lot up. of fun with it. And I feel like we learned a lot. Vampire private security, restrain them. Hey! I, come on, you snuck up on us. No fair. These two plump blood bags look like they might be a good fit for our blood farm, don't they? You won't get away with this. Evil always loses out in the end. Oh, my dear simple wrong boys, I'm sorry, but I have been getting away with it. You see, I'm not just any CEO. I am Phineas Hermwell Wrong, founder of Wrongtown. <laughs> Alive for hundreds You're of years? Still alive? I'm immortal like a vampire? I thought you were cancelled. What? During my reign as the all powerful, commanding, and controlling tyrant at large of the first Wrongtown settlement, I stumbled upon the secret of immortality, the Infinity Chalice, and with it a covenant to drink the blood of the young. But immortality comes at a great price, you see, as I had to watch everything I ever love wilt away. First, they abolished slavery. Then, they stopped burning witches. 
Before you know it, everyone can vote, even minorities. Now women can own property, and I'm getting weaker and weaker every day, fading away. For you see, the chalice kept me alive, but it sapped my strength. I was bedridden, drinking any blood I could get my hands on. But it wasn't until Headmistress Child Murder discovered a portal between worlds in the basement of the Wrongtown Orphanage that I was able to return to full strength. By tapping into the energy of Wrongtown's fears and nightmares, I became stronger than ever, and I was able to raise an army of corporate vampires as my minions and flunkies. And now we will finally achieve my greatest dream. The same dream I've had ever since I was a small, precious boy. The dream of a perfectly vertical city, where the great rule over the incompetent and weak, where slavery is permanent and unchanging, where women are property and subordinate to men, where dignity is a scarce commodity. Oh, oh that's sick. Boo. Boo. Evil. Boo. Lucky wrong, boys. You get to witness the final stage of my plan. As I'm sure you've realized, Halloween is not just a fun holiday with costumes and candy for kids. It's an important ritual. By banning Halloween and denying our own fears their voice, the pressure of the repressed dread will be too great, and the portal will burst fully open, unleashing the nightmare world onto Wrongtown itself, with me and the Xenon group vampires ruling above it all forever. Oh, Sean, I, I don't know what to do. I think Genius. we might be done wait for. Minute, wait a minute, remember, time, remember that old man ghost who told us that when push sure that comes to shove, done. the little gremlins are actually on our side? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he said that you all we had to, to do was look away so that they can do their work. Okay, let's shut our eyes on three. One, years, two, Ten three. Ten thousand years. <laughs> hey, untie me. Hey, it worked. They untied us and tied him up. Thanks, little gremlins. That was pretty cool of them. Thank you. Thank you. Now we can call the mayor and get Halloween unbanned. And we can use the power of love to rehabilitate Phineas Hermwell Wrong. Everyone deserves rehabilitation. Maybe he can even help us take care of those puppies. Not so fast, Sean and Aaron. Midnight the Cat? You, you can talk? Midnight. Oh my god, you killed Fernius Hermwell Wrong, the founder of Wrongtown! Shot a stake through his heart! Well, now we'll never be able to convince him of the virtue of our side. Midnight. You've done magnificently wrong, boys. Better than I ever could have imagined. Tie them up again, private security. Midnight, the cute little cat. We're your big buddies. You were always just a means to an end, wrong boys. You helped us do a coup against that old vampire, the bane of the rest of us vampires' existence, distracting him while we work to undermine his plans. But it's time for you to step aside and let the adults take over. We at the Shadow Council will now control Xenon Group. Oh, are you going to close the portal and unban Halloween to deny the siren call of rulership that is ultimately hollow and dangerous and self-defeating and so on? No, please. We're moderates. We do think he goes too far with the slavery and stuff, but we also plan to rule for 10,000 years as your dark lords feeding on the blood of children. Uh, we're just not gonna go crazy with it. Oh no, they shot Midnight! I am Romulus. Midnight, you've reached the end of your usefulness. There was never a more moderate wing. We used your idealism to motivate you into dealing with Phineas Hermwell wrong, so that we could rule in his place, except even more brutally. Now to kill the wrong boys. <laughs> no, they set me up. They promised me they'd spare you. Let me guess, Romulus, you're not planning to legalize Halloween. It would really right. help us out. We, we could just get out of your hair, you legalize Halloween, I don't know. The boundary between our world and the world of nightmares is dissolving. I can feel it. It's wonderful. Romulus, your work is done. Uh, who, 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 who's who, who that? is that? A new friend? This is my contact on the other side of the portal. He goes by the Nightmare King. You have gotten rid of Phineas Hermwell wrong and the challengers to the ruling throne. You have reached the end of your usefulness to us, Romulus. <laughs> Oh, another stake in the heart. Oh, but we were so close to turning Romulus around. Angus, 
to rule, but I was to rule. The vampires were never going to rule Earth. I only used them. It was always going to be me, the Nightmare King. When the portal fully opens on Halloween, my demon army shall swarm your planet, turning all human beings into the batteries that run their own torture devices, sharing every life that exists, exists in nothing but pain, from beginning to end, forever feeding us. Ooh, that is a dun, shock. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Crazy twist. This is like... Wrong, boys. Wrong, boys. Midnight. Oh, you're not looking so good, little buddy. I'm sorry, boys. I fucked it all up. I, f I fucked it. I... No, Midnight. Uh, it's, so, it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. We, we're just glad that love is finally winning your heart. You're gonna make midnight. it, Midnight. I won't make it, but this is the least I can do. My... I'm untying you with my last act. Midnight. Rest. You're gonna you're, be okay. You're gonna pull through, buddy. <clears throat> Run, boys. I'm sorry I wasn't a better little buddy to you. Ugh. Midnight, no! Hey, all uh, it's the mayor. I was just thinking about it, you guys. I really think that we should unban Halloween. We got the dead walking the streets, and it's not a good look for my re-election. Oh, wait, uh, I'll who? abscond with the mayor. Ah! Oh no, the Nightmare King pulled the mayor into the Nightmare Realm with him. But without him, we can't unban Halloween. We're we're, we're doomed. doomed. The, the, those puppies, the 20,000 puppies. Oh no, they're all gonna die and we're gonna be held legally accountable and the, oh my God, those poor sweet innocent puppies. I'm sorry we failed you puppies. Wrong boys, it's me. Brains! Brains. You're alive as a ghost. As a ghost. I've been wandering your realm for days trying to find you. There was something important I was going to tell you that night when the Nightmare King used me to send you his message. I learned that the only way to close the portal is to pass through it and face your worst fears. Worst fear? Oh, you mean the portal that's in the basement of the old orphanage, which is our house? Enter it and you may have a chance to rescue the mayor and save Halloween. And with that, my unfinished business is completed and my spirit is at rest. <sighs> Well, I'm glad he's at rest, but that was a bit of a weird... It's a little bit horny. Yeah, it's a really horny resting sound. I wonder if everyone has a little orgasm when they go to the... when they die. Yeah, maybe it feels good. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, ah! <laughs> <sighs> well, anyway, I guess we have no other choice. We have to face our worst fears. Yeah, for the sake of the puppies, of course. They shouldn't be having us do these 72-hour puppy delivery shifts and... I'm just getting tired from driving so long. Maybe they'd be okay with if I just stopped my car and rested. I showed up on November 1st with the puppies instead. I could get a good sleep and... No, wait, what am I saying? I made a commitment to these good people. I am going to bring them these 20,000 medically vulnerable puppies to them on October 31st, arriving at exactly the time I committed to, because it's the right thing to do. Oh, Sean, look. That door in our basement we couldn't open has been blown off its hinges, and beyond it is just a swirling blackness. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, our fears, our worst fears, oh, lie beyond that portal. Couldn't it just be like a minor well, fear? A series like, of smaller fears, yeah. maybe, but my uh, greatest fear... I, I, I don't know. But, 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 but my greatest fear... I mean, you go in first. I, uh, I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm ready for this. We gotta snap out of this. It doesn't matter if we're ready or not. The puppies can't wait for us to be ready. You're right. You're right. Let's do it. Okay, at the for same the time. You want to hold hands? Uh, sure. Yeah. I just thought that we would. Does it calm out. you, or is it just yeah, yeah, like sure. show friendship and yeah. solidarity? Yeah. I would not need the rest. Yeah, let's do it. And here we go. It's so hot. It's. Uh, ah! Skulls, there's skeletons, there's ghosts, I feel like I'm being followed. Parasites, germs, I'm being watched. I'm alone. I feel it all. Every fear. Every uh, fear. Uh, oh no, Sean, we're being broken apart. No. Uh, ah! uh, Sets. Oh my god, spiders. No, not spiders. 
Any other bug in the world would be better than spiders. They're, they're crawling all over me. No, get off! Get off! Stop biting me! Stop eating me! No! No! Ah! Ah! Me and Aaron are interviewing Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz this week for the podcast. I need to read her book. Sure you are, Grandpa. Aaron's been dead for ten years. I'm gonna make you all my special spaghetti recipe. Oh, wait. No, I can't remember the spice balance. No, I can't make my recipe. No! Ah! Oh, oh, Sean, you're, it's you. It's not spiders. It's... Oh, my God. We did it. Yeah, we fa- we faced our greatest fears. Hey, we faced our greatest fears. That's pretty good. Not so fast, wrong boys. Now you're gonna have to deal with us. Oh, it's our leather-clad sunglass-wearing... Collateral damage warrior versions of us. Except they've got, like, little demon horns. Come on, wrong boys. Isn't it tempting to compromise? To let loose, be edgy and cruel? To hate? No. No, no. no. You know, wrong boys, a wise doctor once said that hate is the best medicine. And if it doesn't work, increase the dose. No. no, we will never let our fears turn to hatred. No, we won't become intoxicated with power and lose our virtue in the maintenance of that power. And that's not how the saying goes. Come on, wrong boys, join us. Hate the annoying lips, share their screenshots. Hate the naive, hate the unprincipled activists making the cause look bad. Surely, wrong boys, at the very least, you could hate the evil and the powerful. No, they're a product of their environment. We can redeem them. There's no reason to hate anybody. You give us no choice, wrong boys. Prepare to die. Get off me. God, hey, John, look out behind you. Do it once. You think you'll be able to best us and the Nightmare King with your utopian ramblings? <laughs> I think not. Submit to force. Might is right. Let's work together now. We can get them. The only one as strong as us is us. Uh, yeah, we got them. Tie them up, quick. And I will say, we didn't just use force. We outsmarted them. That was brains. Yeah, we work together, uh, which is something they can't do because they're evil and they would fight. Do it. Finish us off. <laughs> but by defeating us, you will only become us. Oh, yeah, that is a good point. If You know, we have them already. If we just killed them in cold blood. Yeah, that's kind of, it's not really our thing. I mean, now that I think of it, they're the ones who suggested finishing them off. We didn't even, we weren't going to do that. Maybe we just need to accept that the shadow version of us is actually part of us, is part of what we could be and what we could become. I think we just need to accept that sometimes we do feel hate, but that we don't need to let it control us. Yeah, and it's easy to get caught up in some passion that allows you to like turn a blind eye to suffering or think inconsistently. And like these are things that we all have to struggle with our own limits and to approach these important ethical questions with a high level of self-awareness, compassion, charity, and hospitality even. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Increase the dose of love, of course. Of love, yeah, yeah that's right. Saying. All right, shadow versions of us, put her there. Handshake? No, 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 no. They're integrating us with their hospitality. The principle of charity they extended to us, it's, uh, it's making our power fade. We're fusing with them. It's working. Where, where are we? Uh, it's some sort of creepy abandoned factory. Oh, yeah. Oh, did you see that? It was... The silhouetted form against the escaping steam of that pipe. I hear the sound of metal scraping, like a knife is being dragged across a railing. Uh, Sean? He's right behind me, isn't he? Serial <laughs> <laughs> ah, killer! Quick, this way! You can run, but you can't hide! Quick, quick in here! Let's shut the door, shut the door. <gasps> a children's nursery room? What's this doing attached to the factory? Oh, look at that. It's a cute little baby. Sean, I think we need to take care of them. It's not safe here with this knife-wielding serial killer on the loose. Here, let me pick it up. Turn it towards us so we can see its cute little face. Cuckoo gaga, wrong boys. 
Let's get out of here. Ah, the entire nursery just burst into flames. Quick, through here. Ah, the spooky abandoned carnival. <laughs> hey, maybe this door. Ah, the scientific consensus on anthropogenic climate change. Ah, ah, this way. Oh my god, it's our house and there's 20,000 dead puppies. No, 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 no. no, no. Wait, Sean, stop for a second and think. Ah! Okay, wait, what? If we're trapped here in the nightmare world, then our nightmares will only have power as long as we refuse to face our fears. Right. So that means we have to stop running and go face the Nightmare King. Let's do it. Let's turn around and go back through this door. I can hear wrong voice just on the other side of the door. <laughs> A kitchen? A small boy just peeling potatoes? With the mirthful shrieks of the haunted mansion floating in through the vents? What is, what is this? Percival? Is that you? Oh, please, headmistress child murderer. Can I please just join the festivities for one second? One, one, ha one, one half second? Please, just, just any small fraction of a second, headmistress. I, I'll do it. No! Any Enough of this insubordination. <laughs> I'm sorry! <laughs> oh, the little boy is a ghost now. There, there, little guy. Sorry you got murdered and we didn't believe you before. But hey, we're gonna get Halloween on band and you, you'll get to experience it, so it's not so bad, right? Oh, get are. away from me! I'll kill you! I'll kill you all! I'll rule over you for 10,000 years of darkness! Oh my god! Percival? You were the Nightmare King all along? Hey, Percy, I know how it feels, man. I mean, I was never murdered as a child, but I can see why that would give you a certain rage, a little bit of a rage, and then you might want to become the ruler of the Nightmare Realm, the ruler of the world with that, so that... that Understandable. What happened to you is horrible. But come on, is becoming the Nightmare King really going to help anything? Yeah, I mean, just think about it. I mean, assume everyone is subordinate to you and you're the demonic overlord of all realms. You'll feel so lonely. You'll have no peers. Yeah, is that really going to fill the void in your heart from what happened to you as a kid? I find something that fills the void in my heart is fresh baked bread and watching a flick and just... <laughs> yeah. Uh, lazy weekends. Tell you what, we'll make space for you and all your feelings, no matter how big and bad they are, if you agree to accept the power of love into your heart and release the mayor from his cage over there in the corner. He's, hey, wrong boys, you're doing great. How about this? Take the mayor, we unban Halloween, and then we take you, Percival, trick-or-treating. It'll be your first real Halloween, Percival. What do you say? Come on. Drop all this Nightmare King business and come celebrate with us. I'm sorry, wrong boys. The Nightmare Realm is some sort of demonic reflection of the weight of the trauma of a hierarchical society. I thought I just needed a Halloween, but I needed something else to be seen. Excuse me, will you two promise to tell the world what really happened to me? what child murderer did? Of course, Percival. Yeah, we're gonna set the record straight. I'm tussling Percival's hair. <laughs> You're a good kid. <laughs> you guys are like cool older brothers. Yeah, yes. True. We are, yeah. And so Halloween was unbanned just in time and Wrongtown was freed from the grips of supernatural repression and domination. The house the Wrong Boys bought transformed from a dreary and scary haunted house into a beautiful, ecologically vibrant mansion. And the Wrong Boys hosted a big Halloween feast that afternoon, where all the residents of Wrongtown shared their innermost fears. 
I'm afraid that I'll flunk out of college. I'm afraid my children will hate me, but I, I just worry about them so much. Yeah, I'm afraid of that too. And I'm afraid that ghosts are real. Frightening. Frightening stuff. Climate change just terrifies me. I, I, I don't want to be burned alive in my home and tortured by scarcity. Same. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm afraid of that. <laughs> at, least, at least we're not alone in it, right? I'm worried I'll never finish my screenplay. I'm scared that the government is run by hostile aliens. They could totally get away with it. Share your fears on that one. I share that. Well, everyone's afraid of that. My greatest fear is that everything is meaningless. I just can't do what I used to anymore. I'm afraid that I've pushed people away. That's scary. I'm afraid of the dark. And so the Rontonians shared their fears with one another, and they found that they were not alone, which made it better. By confronting them and mentioning them, they were able to better manage them and to resist the temptation to act unjustly out of fear or avoidance of understanding the self. Looks like we really did save Halloween. Great job. Great job to you, great job to me, great job to all of us. I got to experience Halloween. My spirit can now be at rest. Ah. And it looks like that's the last of the 20,000 puppies inside now. You cuties, they sure are settling in nicely. Hey, you're a cute little pup, aren't you? Aren't you? Oh, it's adorable, it's adorable. Ah, yeah. Hey, if you're good, you can have the bone. Here you go. You wanna play with that toy? You wanna play with that one, puppy? You wanna go? Yeah! <laughs> Perfect dog. Perfect dog. Can I have the bone, please? Oh, sure. Here you go. You know, Sean, this home for wayward puppies is everything we ever dreamed of, and more. It really all did work out in the end, didn't it? <laughs> Alright, just sign here and the puppies are officially yours. Wait a sec, you're not our usual delivery person. You're... Raph Superstar Geet Finkus! <laughs> yeah, delivery man was exhausted from an all-night drive, but wanted to make sure it got here on time. Called in a favor. He's my reading buddy in elementary school. Good guy. Oh, Mr. Finkus. Well, s since you're already here, do you think you'd be able to do a new song off your new Halloween album? <laughs> Shit, I guess so. <laughs> Put me on the spot a bit, but all right. We gladly feast on those who would subdue us. Trick or geek. Man, these puppies cute. Close by the doom. Ghosts ride the broom. Oh shit, Mr. Bones played a tune on his ribs. Would have gotten away, but the meddling kids. Headless anarchists like a horseman. Cheering, sowing like a sports fan. Full size bar send reinforcements. Give a man a mask, he'll give performance. Trick or geek. <laughs> Looking cute, getting treats. Sweet, kind hearted puppy hosts. Increase the dose with spooky ghosts. Wrong boys, bona fide fighter saviors. House on a graveyard built by old slavers. Bomb drop, ragdoll, kill grapes for eyeballs. Politics sucks like a vampire. Blow up a pipeline, bracket satire. Trick or geek, wet bulb heat. People on the street, not enough to eat. I'm afraid of heights, I'm afraid of crisis Losing all our rights while the sea level rises Afraid of germs, crawling little worms Spiders and snakes, my own mistakes Loved one's health, inevitable death Show up in costume, but it's not that kind of event Goodbye, kids! Uh, 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 what happened? What's going on? Are you okay? That was... You just acted out the entire Seriously Wrong Halloween special by yourself. All the voices, sound effects, and everything. It was, like, coming out of your mouth. That serum, it changed me somehow. It... it, it, it I'm, I, I'm, I've become a... a, a, a wear tape. A wear Seriously Wrong Halloween special. We need to start to work on a cure. And that was the Seriously Wrong Halloween special. So, patient, were you able to produce a urine sample for us? Oh yeah, I filled that right up to the line, one terrified little squirt at a time. We use the Seriously Wrong Halloween special as a way to medically induce urination in patients who are unable to urinate to provide urine samples because it's so scary it just causes people to... And the patients love it. They find it very entertaining. Worked for me. And we'll just pop out that tape. You made it to the end. Congratulations, everyone. I know you've been waiting and... 
terrified that you'd be cursed by this tape forever and you want to know, you demand the secret that will free you from that curse. The one simple, easy thing that you need to do is nothing. The one thing that could break the horrible curse of the Seriously Wrong Halloween tape is the bravery that it takes to listen to that tape in its entirety. Pat yourself on the back. The secret was inside of you all along. You listened, you're here, you've done it, you're beautiful. Yeah, you look great today. Inside and out. Yeah, sorry if you were expecting something else. I don't know what you wanted. Like you'd pat your head and jump in a circle and that lifts the curse. No, it's it was the bravery inside you all along. Yeah, and that probably works too. I mean, that might even it work. It might help if you're still worried. But yeah, yeah, it might even give a benefit if you're not already not cursed. It's worth a shot. So thanks for listening, everyone, and happy Halloween. <laughs> Bye. Woo. Ah, ghosts. Ah, ah. vampires. Woo. You know. ah, I'm running away. I'm running away from the, ah, the killer. Ah, you know that sort of stuff. <laughs>